Um, you has a fan. Um, this comes from uh, Star Taylor by way of her mom, Amy Taylor. And um, she writes to me and says, My 14-year-old daughter is a huge fan. She has some hippo paper clips she wanted to send to Tara. As I've sat through every what the fuck show you've ever made, Star thinks it's so funny she wants us to watch too. You owe it to me to send these paper clips on to Tara. So let me pull these out for you and show you. There, see, there's the, the thing. Ah. Let me, let me open this very carefully because there's a little card in here too. Yeah, yeah. Here's here's here's. The, oh, oh ah 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 ah. I'm a little concerned that a 14 year old is watching us. I know, right? For a second, you're going, oh, and then you go, wait a second. Okay, yeah, you're going to love these. Um, if I can get them off the floor. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. All right, yeah. Um, here's a little card she sent with the googly fish Aww. eyes on it. And I don't know how well you'll be able to see these, but these are hippo shaped. <gasps> Paper clips. Oh my god, those are so cute! So, I'll be sending those <laughs> along to you very soon. Thank you, Star! That was so sweet of you. Okay, here, here's, here's, oh my. Look, look at the picture she drew of us-ish. You're a unicorn. I'm a unicorn. Wow, okay, the caption says, my side says, I hate you, and yours says, embrace the orgasm, Nash. I'm assuming... 14. This guy? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm a happy hippo! 14. <laughs> Stop! Stop! I can't take it anymore! So yeah, you're you're corrupting a whole new generation. Just so you know. I thought it was just my nieces and nephews. Just your nieces and nephews. Nope. You've got you've got other people out there watching. So yeah, hopefully hopefully Star was watching tonight. She'll probably get a kick well, out of that. Thank you, Star. That's awesome. All right, let's see here. Tonight, you know, it's funny. We go we go with something sweet like that, and then I realize, oh shit, now we have to do the news. Um there's no good segue for that. There really isn't. There, there isn't. And no. now for something completely different. And now for something fucking awful. Oh, that's precious. Now here's this horrible shit. Yeah. It's kind of like Ren and Stimpy. So every now and then they would have like a moment and then it would get horrible again. Yeah. Uh, each week... Catherine goes on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of stuff, brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And. Crazy. Wow. I'm crazy you remember when we were kids and the Happy Meal toys rocked? So yes, and now they suck. When we were a kid, we got, we get stuff like, I, I loved the Lego kits. Those are the best Happy Meal toys because no matter. How many times you get the same one like three times, but it didn't matter because they were Lego bricks. Well, yeah, but Lego's not Lego anymore. No, it's you don't not. just get a big old tub of Lego bricks anymore. You get a kit and instructions. Yeah, I mean, it's just... and I'm like, what the fuck fun is that? You used to be able to build whatever you wanted. Now you have to build the plane. <sighs> well, and they didn't used to be gender specific. The Happy Meal toys. Yeah. Every kid, same fucking toy. And you liked it. I remember they even had like transformers that were like the hap the, the McDonald's food. Yes. I, I had like, you know, a the, the so hot cakes and sausage that turned into a robot. It was weird. And who doesn't want hot cakes that turn into a robot? Who doesn't? Um Okay, well that's that's um that's those were the good ones. And uh they, they don't have those kinds of uh of toys anymore they, they they've got very different toy surprises now wow marijuana pipe found in four-year-old's kids meal 
Talk about a happy meal. Gillian Spear of NBC News, shame on you. <laughs> shame on you. No, I don't know. I think we might have to give her that one. <sighs> it's creating a repeat customer. It's good marketing. Michigan it's family. Like going to eat the munchies and come back. Michigan family was surprised to find a marijuana pipe, rather than the traditional toy, inside their four-year-old's Burger King's kids' meal. Family was in Dundee, Michigan, visiting a water park when the boy's grandfather stopped by a local uh, Burger King to pick up food for the youngster. Family discovered the plight before the boy got it to it and contacted police immediately. Police report that a 23-year-old employee had put the pipe in the box in order to hide it while he worked. He had no intention of giving it away. Really? That's where you hide it? That's that's where you hide it. That's not where I would hide it. I, well, generally, you don't hide your drug paraphernalia in anything that gets given to customers. Yes! Because you're going to lose it, and that stuff's not cheap. Well, it depends on the kind of, of marijuana pipe. It could be like an actual actual pipe or you know if it was like an actual like legit corn cob pipe i feel like we wouldn't be reading about right, it right um oh i wonder if it was a breakfast meals because if so that weezer song would be really appropriate i got my hash pipe the end of the story is even funny two of the man's friends have also been charged with drug possession they were spotted in their car outside the burger king trying to warn their friend of the police's involvement. <laughs> uh. What exactly is the charades for that? For the cops are coming because you put a pot pipe in the Happy Meal. Oh, just, just, okay. Of all the places in the store, he could have put it. That's the thing, you know? There are so yeah. many places to hide shit in a fast food restaurant. There's always, like, a deep fat fryer not being used because they rotate them out. Yep. You probably have a locker. Mm-hmm. There's, like, inside the paper towel dispenser in the bathroom. And why couldn't he put it in his damn pocket? Well, it's probably too big. How big of a pipe are we talking here? I don't know. Because, you know, there, there, there are, are, are pipes and then there are you know, big old blasters and shit. You don't want the customers thinking you're really excited about those onion rings. Like <laughs> no. Uh, Mako has, has a wonderful solution. Smoke blunts instead of keeping a pipe. There you go. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Um, I cannot pronounce that because Thukla says, how did the person giving the box not notice? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean. <laughs> oh, look, the I toy's imagine... already in there. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I imagine at some point when you're in like your seventh hour at the Burger King, you're just on autopilot. Mm, yeah. I know McDonald's doesn't have onion rings, but this happened at a Burger King, which does. Well, you want something that happened at McDonald's because we got one. Segway. If it wasn't for my horse. Woman takes horse inside McDonald's. Horse defecates on floor. How very Tywin Lannister of her. Uh, on Saturday of the 20th July, police from Whitefield received a call from McDonald's on Fountain Place regarding a woman on, on horse using the drive through Staff refused to serve the woman due to company policy. The woman then took the horse into the restaurant, who ended up doing his business on the floor. Sight and smell of this caused obvious distress and upset the customers trying to eat, as well as staff members 
Officers arrived at the location and issued a fixed penalty notice for causing alarm and distress to other customers and staff. That's also kind of a huge health code violation. Why? Which part of drive through is giving you trouble? I used to have friends who walked through the drive through So at least she was on a separate mode of transportation. Like, I used to have friends who just walk up to the window. And I don't think, I think a horse counts. As drive through Yeah, I think you should be able to ride your horse up to the drive through I don't think there's a problem with that. I don't understand why they would object to that. Well, they apparently said it was company policy or something. But if they say no, maybe just tie the horse up and go inside on foot. How do you even, those doors are not that big. Well, no, a horse is only what? If it's got its head down, it's only about what up to my shoulder. So it's about five, six feet. And how do you hold the door open? Like, how do you get the door open? Did someone had to hold the door? Well, <laughs> oh, let me get that door there for you, dear. Here you go. Oh, let's hold. To cooperate. That's being a little too polite. Oh, Mike. Fuck your Mitsubishi. I'm I have a, a horse, horse outside. outside. Yes. Actually, no, the horse was inside taking a poop. Yes, unfortunately, it was not a horse outside. It was a horse inside. Ugh. And I horses, did... I don't know if you've ever been to a town. Have, have you been around horses ever? Yes. And I have marched behind them in parades. Yeah. Yeah, we have uh, in Charleston and Savannah, they have a whole bunch of historic horse drawn buggy carts walking around. And it's not just it's not a quiet little poop. No, it is. It is an event. What it's a, horse a large is. amount of excrement. It's... Well, if you watch Game of Thrones, you know. Yes. Yeah, it's it's it takes a certain amount of talent to march in step, twirl a baton, and avoid the giant piles of horse shit. So, I just... Does this, this is a regular... Does she bring the horse into every place she goes? Maybe that's like her thing. That's not a good thing! Someone suggested maybe she's Amish, but I feel like she would be at McDonald's at <laughs> yeah. the drive yeah. Although they do that room springer thing. Well, yeah, but you know what? Rent a car. If you're if you're gonna go, go whole hog. I don't know if do <clears throat> Amish people eat McDonald's. I mean, they might now and then. I feel like they'd be more of a Denny's crowd. <laughs> uh, I'm just uh, and and here's the worst thing. Who's gonna cl who's had to clean that up? Someone who doesn't make enough money. Yep. Some fucking teenager who makes $9 an hour. Oh, totally said maybe it's a seeing eye pony. Oh my God. When I worked at the mall, you weren't supposed to have dogs in the mall unless they were service animals. And there was like, people would bring in their dog and just claim it was a service animal. And it would be like a Shih Tzu in a purse. And they'd be like, oh, no, he's a service animal. And once they said that, you had to leave them alone. But obviously, a shih tzu in a purse is not a service animal. Well, it's, you know? it's, it's guarding the purse. Like, we had a lady with a chihuahua on a leash that used to bark its little head off. And we're like, if it was a service animal, it would be trained not to do that. Also, who's ever used a chihuahua as a service animal? But Maybe really, really small people. <laughs> but she claimed that it was a service animal, so we had to leave her alone because we couldn't prove it wasn't. So what service does it do? Stuff? It lets, lets everybody know that she's coming by barking really loudly all the time. So maybe, maybe she was like Daredevil and it barked all the time to produce the radar that allowed her to see. Art, art, art. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay, this... Florida. Oh, and this, this is not, okay. This is not a little kind of thing. This is kind of a big deal for, for Miami. Um, I mean, this, I mean, this is kind of a big deal for, for Florida. 
Um, they're, they're, football is a very sacred thing in the South. Mm -hmm. College football. Oh, yeah. Which is weird. Like, not even professional football. Yeah, it's, college is so much of a bigger deal. Yeah. It's, but, um, and, and this is, you know, college, I think. But there are, you know, you sow your wild oats a bit when you're in college, but this, when does this start getting fun, is my question. Um, Antonio Morrison suspended again, and it does, you know, kind of burying the lead on this. Uh, what did he do? Uh, according to police report, Morrison was in the vicinity when Gainesville police responded to a disturbance near the All-Star Sports Bar. Um, per the report, Officer William A. Arnold had had a police canine named Bear in the car. Morrison walked over to the vehicle and began to bark at the dog. First problem. Don't do that. No. Don't ever do that. that Those things will take your fucking arm off. It's, it's not like, it, it will, it, those, okay, if you kill a police dog, you're considering to have, to have assaulted an officer. Yeah. They, they don't fuck around with that shit. No, you're prosecuted as a cop killer. Yep. Uh, but also, those dogs will take your fucking arm off. That's what they're made, that's what they're trained to do. Uh, yeah. Officer Arnold stated, Morrison's actions prevented police from doing this job properly, so Arnold asked Morrison to step in front of the vehicle. Morrison resisted when the officer tried to handcuff him. Two other deputies arrived and helped handcuff Morrison as he repeatedly was told to stop resisting. Court stated Morrison, 19, told Arnold he made a woof woof sound because the canine officer had barked at him first. Oh. Well, I mean, that's okay then. That bitch had it coming. Wah, wah. Hey. If you're getting into an argument with a dog, you have already lost. And if the police dog is barking at you, maybe you should just back away from the police dog. Because police dogs don't, they're trained. They don't just bark for nothing. They don't bark because they saw a butterfly. No. No, they, they bark because some shit's about to go down. Because there's a big dude approaching the police car. <laughs> who might be a little inebriated. I'm just glad he didn't start marking his territory. Why would you leave, leave the dog? I, man, I see a non-police dogs in, in cars. It, is, it says he's suspended a, or again. arrested again. Has he done this before? Uh, no, it comes on the heels of Morrison's June 16th arrest for punching a bouncer at a Gainesville bar. Oh, all right. Just something else you shouldn't do, because they're called bouncers for a reason. And if you punch them, you're not getting to stay. Yeah, he started it. He started it. It is not a good argument to use when you're talking about a dog. At least he didn't hit the dog, yeah? There is that. We'll take what little victories we can get on this show. So, um, I'm wondering who's keeping score on this, because this, this is definitely coming into our why does this shit keep happening department. How many, how many times has it been on this one now? Pocket dialed 911 call leads teen leads to teen drug charges. Invert 911 cell phone call to Central Texas Police has led to drug charges against two teenagers. College police uh, college station police on Monday said the phone was in the pocket of two uh, of one of the two men at home where marijuana was allegedly being smoked. Sergeant Danny Junick uh, says responding officers found no emergency but smelled marijuana at the residence. Officers obtained a search warrant and seized cocaine, marijuana, and more than $4,100. Two College Station residents being held Monday on marijuana possession charges. You have a bird in uh, here? That's, that's my Twitter alert. Oh, okay. But... I, I've got a theory. It could be bunnies. No. So, so we just found out, well, 
found out, I don't know why people are surprised, that the NSA tracks our phone calls. I don't think this is happening by pocket dial at all. You think, think the NSA is, is forcing? They know that you're selling drugs and they're just setting your phone off so they have a reason to come to your house. It's pre-crime. It's minority report. They're like, we know this motherfucker's doing something, making butt dial us. This is not as crazy as, because I was about to go, and then, wait a minute. That makes a bizarre amount of sense. Free crime, bitches. <laughs> Holy shit. Because, you know, with my phone, let me see, uh, you know, you turn mine on, and it's got, uh, the, I said you turn mine you on. You can't pocket dial anymore. Well, there's there's one down here at the bottom. It says emergency call. Yeah, but phones shut off now. Like, it's so much harder to pocket dial than it used to be. It is, because there's no buttons anymore, but. It's a conspiracy. Man, dude. They know. They know what you're doing. They are always watching so when you're at home masturbating to my little pony they know you gotta wonder about the poor nsa agents because at this point how much have they seen man yeah i'm not talking terrorism shit i'm not talking any crime shit i'm just talking all the shit that has a camera pointed at it at any given time yeah, they're probably totally numb. They probably have no semblance of human emotion left, the people that have to monitor that kind of crap. Is there such a thing as porn PTSD? Yeah, like, they're probably just so desensitized. They're like, yep. I've seen more vagina than I ever thought possible in one lifetime. They're pointing out that I'm probably going to disappear now. Okay, so well... Pocket dial the police while I'm in my mess. You'll all know what happened. Tell my tale. Okay. Well, that was an accidental 911 call. Um, and this, I don't understand why the picture on this one is the picture that it is, but it's pretty amazing. Um, this was an someone who actually called 911. Just on the wrong person. Mark Falk, an accused naked intruder, called 911 on himself during attack. I have no idea why Shia LaBeouf is the main picture on this story. Because he's going to star in the movie, obviously. Um, naked man who broke into the Chesapeake, Virginia home made things more efficient for law enforcement officials when he called 911 on himself. Mark Folk, 21, allegedly burst in the home of Jim and Helen Hardy, wearing only a skimpy towel. Police say he dropped the towel, picked up a knife, and threatened the couple. The sight of the naked man suddenly appearing in their house is unusual. Wait, that's, that's, un, that's more than unusual. That's not, a, oh yeah, that happens every once in a while, but... Well, uh, yeah. I mean... It's not always unusual. Sometimes there's a naked man that you expect to be in your home. Sometimes it's your husband. Sometimes it's your Tuesday hooker. Sometimes you expect a naked man to be in your home. Sometimes you don't. Suspect asked to use the phone and then called 911 only to be frustrated by the operators. Evidently, they asked your address and name and everything. He was dissatisfied, so he threw the phone. Falk then allegedly picked up the knife and threatened the couple. He said he was going to kill us both. At one point, he said, we're all three going to die here. Jesus Christ. Police showed up. Falk just walked right out of the house as if nothing was wrong. Falk was charged with breaking and entering a decent exposure. Other counts. And is currently in, in a Chesapeake jail. It's This is like you're coming in on the second act. Yeah. Is this an alcohol was involved? What, what just, what, how did we get to this point? This is like, they're doing some like Pulp Fiction out of order shit on the movie here. Because you don't just open with the naked guy and the towel and the knife. 
you gotta you gotta give us some build up to that shit. Man, that's the worst game of Clue ever. <laughs> In the living room with the knife and his penis. I said <laughs> like he didn't even really have a, like first I need help call 911 then we're all going to die <laughs> home like I'm a little concerned for this guy. Okay. Like he couldn't really even seem to focus on a goal. DJ BJ from the channel says help uh, and he says uh, worst strippergram ever. Right? Yeah. Just, it's it's like there's a real gone. Was it their towel? <laughs> Lady this cat. Hang on, I dropped the knife. Guy bends over. No! But like, did he show up wearing his own towel? Or did he show up naked and was wearing one of their towels? Apparent I it doesn't say. These are details we need. I want to know why Shia LaBeouf. Is... Yeah, I know. What's that about? What? And it's not even a current picture. It's like an old picture. Right. Yeah. It's like the one from like that shit he was doing before Transformers. Uh, I just. That's just... before everybody hated him. Yeah. I just. I... Also, I'd like to point out if you scroll down, there's a there's a slideshow of things you can't do naked. Like. They probably stole every link in that slideshow from us. Probably. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back and give this one special attention. But we, we've got... we've They're got telling we, us we should cover something on the right side with freezing urine? Ah, uh, no. No, no. 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 Oh, okay. All right. All right. We'll cover it briefly. Subway employee puts his penis on sandwich bread. Another freezes urine at work. All right, I'm looking at the picture, and I'm here to tell you, if you're going to do that joke, you better have a foot long. Yeah, because anything... Com yeah, you're not... Uh, that's not a foot long, ladies and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. That's that's not even... I, that's, that's not even six inches. Mm -mm. And if you're going to do that joke with Subway bread, you better have a foot long, sir. At least it's uh, maybe it's cold in there. I mean, he's like rocking the flatbread. <sighs> oh, for God's sakes. The bombshell comes after uh, received several photos by the two men in Columbus, Ohio. Their Twitter and Instagram pages are festooned with photos of their exploits. In several photos, Subway signature bread is shaped into penises. I don't think I ever want to eat at Subway again. Why would you freeze your urine at work? <laughs> well, considering the guy's screen name is Weed Priest, need we say more? But seriously, why? Oh, there's a picture of the yes spread. Yes, let's let's have a look, shall we? Now that's a foot long. <laughs> that is indeed. A foot long. Like, I get why you would sculpt bread into dicks. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I I get that there's a male impulse to put your dick on everything. Hey! There is! I have not, I have never had an impulse to just randomly start putting my dick on things. There, but there is. You have to admit that there, there exists this weird thing in men that they want to just rub their dick all over everything and show it to everybody. You're obsessed with your own big tackle. Not me! Like, you can't even help it. I have, I can honestly say that I have never unintentionally sh or, it, yeah, it's never been an unwelcome event when my penis is revealed. I'm just saying it's a thing, and I, I understand that it's a thing. I don't know why it's a thing, but it's a thing. So, I, I'm really not that taken aback by any of the dick tomfoolery it's the frozen Dude, urine your frozen it's, urine yeah oh god um 
Like, if you're worried about passing a drug test, just borrow somebody else's. Do we want to end just with... When it's not hot, they're going to notice. Urine is hot. Do we want to end with some good old-fashioned stupidity? Uh, did you see the thing I tweeted you from Russia? What one? I tweeted it to you. Uh, I, I, this, let me see. It's, it's from a source you don't love, but it might be worth it. Let me look. Trying to move things along tonight. Um, I know, because I was super late. Sorry. Doe-dicking. Doe-dicking. They have coined it doe-dicking. Doe-dicahedron. That sounds like a euphemism for male dysfunction. How was your date last night, Susie? Oh my god, he was such a doe-dick. Ow. That's, that's harsh. Um, I'm just saying. I... I think that's a more apt use of the term. Woman gets head stuck in railings during sex. Woman got her head stuck in some railings while having sex with a boyfriend. The 46-year-old from Lipstick, uh, um, Lipetsk, Lipetsk in Russia said she wanted to, quote, spice things up with her man. They were called police after finding the woman naked and unable to free herself from the stairwell. Police arrived. The woman said she had been having consensual sex with a partner when she became stuck. Her boyfriend was not around when the officers turned up. Well, he ain't a boyfriend now, no more. I originally pulled this off Gawker, which had multiple sources, but like three of them were in Russian. And yeah, he bailed. They found him later and he realized she was stuck and bailed. Well, because he's because he's married. Maybe if you're married and you're having an affair, you turn down the public sex. You turn it down. Also, this is another I advocated this before. This is another one of those times when whiskers on humans would come in handy. Yeah, yeah. Just saying. It totally would. I mean, I'm trying to figure out if it was some kind of like amateur BDSM restraint thing. Gone awry. Or maybe just bad coordination. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, let's end with some good old-fashioned stupidity. The reason why is I have video for this one. And we keep doing this. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you are going to do something illegal, if you do something that results in the destruction of property, fuck's sake, don't put that shit on YouTube! Let me bring this up here. Here's a video. This is what happened. Man who fell through bus shelter with no pants find wants to move to Australia. Drunken That's prankster. Quite a headline. Yeah, drunken prankster was filmed falling through a bus stop roof with his trousers down, has been caught and hauled into court after he became a YouTube hit. There he goes. Boingy boingy boom, and he goes through. Sean Martin, 26, from Stockport, was so drunk he decided to scale the 10-foot-high shelter, clambered over the top, pulled down his trousers to bear his backside at his mates. After bouncing up and down on the shelter, he crashed through the uh, perspex, um, landing on the ground. Video became a YouTube sensation, but ended up with Martin facing court this week. Court heard Martin was drunk at the time and remembered little of the incident. So why did you put it on fucking YouTube? Well, presumably someone else put it on YouTube. Well, I would. I mean, if you can bounce up and down on the top of a bus shelter, pull your pants down and film it all at once, you deserve to be a YouTube sensation. Your computer's making noises. Is that my computer? Yep. Well, it might have seemed like a good idea at the time. Oh, it's okay. auto-playing. Auto-playing. Ah, ah, auto-playing. There's 20 something men. That scared the, the crap out of me. <laughs> well, you know what's funny is it sounded a bit like the more you know thing. <laughs> you over stop, uh, stop. Stop making noises. Yeah, it's, it's. <sighs> of course, I pause it right on him. Oh, <laughs> uh, looks like a full moon out tonight. Now I'm looking at this kid's pasty ass. 
great. I just these are not if your friends did if any of my friends did something like this to me, they would not be my friends. Yeah. That's not the definition of a friend. Friends don't let friends bear their ass on YouTube. Friends don't let, let friends, friends keep John evidence. Knoxville. Unless that friend is Johnny Knoxville. But who would want to be friends with that guy anyway? Look at the shit he does to his friends. Yeah. Yeah, friends don't keep the evidence. No. Friends help dispose of the evidence. They don't accumulate more of it. See, you're kind of failing to understand how the whole friend thing works. If he moves to Australia, he's really going to want to keep those trousers on. His lawyer and Martin said Martin had an online retail business and now plans to emigrate to Australia with his family. I don't understand why that came into it's. How is that relevant? Yeah. I want to live here now. Okay. Keep those pants on or a snake is going to bite your dick off. That's Australia. Or yeah. Giant tarantula is going to rip your dick off or S something. Drop bear is going to tear your dick off. Gravity. Something terrible. Something terrible. Is going to happen to your dick if you don't keep those pants on while you're outdoors in Australia. Koala is going to set your dick on fire. Eh, koalas are always high. They're not setting anything on fire. So what do we learn? This We've learned apparently that men want to put their dick on everything. Yes! Not in everything, but on everything. I was not well, aware of this. You take what you can get. I was not aware this was you a were thing. You aware that men are obsessed with their own dicks. Come on. I wasn't aware they put it on. That, that, I, 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 okay, someone did not send me the memo. There's even an oatmeal cartoon about it. I guess I miss. I love you so much when you're not home. I rub my junk all over your stuff. Yeah. I think it's a greeting card, actually. <laughs> well, okay. A apparently, I am a bad male because I don't know this shit. Some. I'm not getting the newsletter, oh, guys. Mike, Mike has that greeting card. Of course he of does. Of course he does. Of course Mike does. My producer, everyone. Um, we've learned horse outside. Fuck your Big Mac. I have a horse outside. Especially, not fuck your Big Mac. I have a horse right here. Especially considering this is an animal who, when it takes a dump, leaves a crater. And don't hold the door for the chick on the horse at the McDonald's. Oh, sweetie, I got the door for you. There's something that there's you can be too polite. Um, we've learned that kids meals are kids meal prizes are way better than they used to be when we were kids. Yeah, right. I know. Shit. I want to go out and get like a four piece McNugget right now. Jesus. Um, we learned that don't bark at the police dog. Don't talk. What? Leave the police dog alone. He's trying to work. If you're in an argument with a dog, you've already lost. Ask the son of Sam. Yeah. Wow. I wonder how many people are actually going to get that one. They're way too young. Yeah, I know. Um, uh, we learned that the NSA is, is calling 911 on your ass with your ass. The NSA is in your ass and they're using it against you. All up in your ass. All up in it. All up in it. Um. We learn, yes, Nami was right. We learn that you need to embrace the orgasm. 14-year-old. Unicorn Nash. 14-year-old. I think the 14-year-olds are watching us. I'm sorry. Don't grow up like me, 14-year-olds. Grow up and be a decent human being. <laughs> this occurs to me we're old enough to have 14-year-olds. Yeah. Yeah. 